Some things should never be repeated, like the impassioned speech I gave to my first grade classmates about the leadership qualities of Rainbow Bright. But if you're trying to learn guitar, having a way to repeat or loop yourself is, in my opinion, the most invaluable tool you can have. So we're going to talk about looper pedals and maybe some exercises on, well, first of all, how to use them and then different exercises you can do to kind of uh, make a practice routine for yourself, right? So first of all, most looper pedals work in the exact same way. Now I'm using a Pigtronics Infinity. You don't have to have one this nice. This has a lot of features. It's really cool and it sounds great, but there's a ton of them that are way cheaper to get the job done. And they all essentially work in the same way. You hit a button while you're playing, and when you hit it again, whatever you've played between those two moments is captured, recorded essentially, and then looped over and over again, right? So I'm just gonna play an E major chord. I'm gonna open up the looper, and then I'm gonna close it. All right? So now that that's going on in the background, maybe if I wanted to practice like a solo thing, I could do that, right? And then you can stop it and do whatever, right? Now, uh, the important thing to think about when you're first starting out with loopers is that you want to kind of capture it while you're playing. It takes a lot of practice to, to come in cold. And when I say come in cold, like open up the loop the second you start playing. Like if you're going to play like a progression. <laughs> able to like have that be like a perfect loop at first it, it's kind of it's kind of like an art form to really loop things well and that's why I think counting is so important right so if you just got a looper the first thing you want to do is just take like a like a really easy chord like an a minor chord right and we're gonna count it out loud and then hit a downbeat to open and close that loop right so we're just gonna go one two three four one two three four two, three, four. So if you've captured it correctly, you won't hear a variation in the loop. Now, I remember when I first started with loop pedal, it would sound something like this. I'd be like. And then on the, like, the turnaround, it would sound like that just because I wasn't good at looping. So really counting is a very important part of looping, right? So once you've got that down, some exercises you can do to kind of make things more interesting at first is to develop your relationship between chords and scales. And this is something I really like to hammer home in these videos is just really kind of seeing chords and scales as the same thing as just kind of like notes working together to achieve some kind of common goal, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to loop four chords, A minor, C major, G major, and E minor. And then over each of those chords, we're going to put like a piece of a scale or a mode, however you want to look at it, right? So let's get the loop first. We're going to make it really easy. And another tip about looping, like the, the tendency might be to play full volume on the backing track that you're looping, but then once you try to solo over it, you've got nowhere to go. There's no headroom left. So you're kind of fighting your own loop. So one thing to do is either back off on your volume when you're making your original loop that you're practicing over or palm mute it. So whatever the loop is going to be is actually going to be less or it's going to be more quiet eh, than what you're trying to play over it. Now, some pedals you can do this on itself, but it's a good idea just to kind of like start working your volume knob just to kind of get some of this down, right? So again, let's, uh, let's make a really quick loop of just those four chords and we'll do four beats of each chord. So like one, two, three, four, A minor. One, two, three, four to C major, to G major, to E minor started again right so we've got these four chords and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take here and I'll stop it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the the major scale notes this is in the key of C major we're thinking of so the a minor we have these eight notes five seven eight five seven eight five seven you probably already know the a minor scale and we're gonna practice that scale over the A minor chord. And then when the C comes around, we're gonna to go to C major's position, right? Eight, 10, seven, eight, 10, seven, nine, 10. And then when G major comes along, we're gonna play the G mixolydian scale. So we're gonna go three, five, two, three, five, two, three, five. And then when E minor comes along, we're gonna play the E minor scale, but we're gonna start on seven A, which is the E here, right? So seven, nine, 10, seven, nine, 10, seven, nine, right? So when I start the loop, I'm gonna go right into A minor. major to G mixolydian into E minor. So 
again, that's not the most musical exercise that you could do, but it's a really great way to make the connections in your hands and in your brain as far as like what notes, what positions, what forms am I playing over what chord, things like that. Now, in my opinion, the absolute most important way you can use this as a tool is for having your ear improve. And I think the best way to do that is to maybe loop the chords to a song that you've heard an insane amount of times, like one of the all time, like an all time popular song that you can still stand because your ear is so accustomed to how the melody works. So we're gonna pick everybody's favorite rock arena song and we're just gonna lay the chords down first, okay? So it's gonna start in the key of E. Okay, so there's our loop. You may have heard the song before, it's by Journey. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna play not the solo, but we're gonna play the lyrical melody, like what the vocals are doing. And since you already know how this song sounds so well, it's a great way to kind of get inside of a scale shape and kind of learn or teach your ear to find the notes that you're looking for within a shape, right? So again, we said this was in the key of E major, which I think most people are more accustomed to playing in the minor scale shape. So we're gonna to go to C sharp minor, which is the natural minor of E, okay? And now here, so I'll just kind of, I'll jump to the vocal melody, right? So we're gonna start on the G string, nine, we're gonna use nine and 11, and then the B string, nine and 12, right? Like if I were to play through the whole scale, it'd look like that. But I'm really just kind of interested in these bottom few strings because I'm gonna try to attach the melody of the song. So since I know that so well, it's easy for me to kind of find the note that I'm looking for. And the beautiful thing about trying to mimic a vocal melody as compared to a guitar solo is it's a good way to really train your ears because the range of pitch is not going to be what it could be in a guitar solo. Like a guitar solo can start up here and then really kind of get high all of a sudden. Whereas the human voice can only go so dynamically. I mean, even the greatest singers don't have like huge intervals between the spaces of their notes. So something like this is a great way to learn just how to move around inside of a scale instead of reading a tab thing. Because there is kind of like a danger in just trying to like memorize a tab and just looking at a tab while you're playing. It's really gonna be much more beneficial to you in the long term to get inside of a scale shape and to learn where those notes are in a scale, right? So even if I was playing along and I was hitting wrong notes, uh, like. your brain is gonna make the connections where you know if it sounds higher or lower the next note. And more often than not, you're gonna start guessing right. And then you can kind of more organically find your way inside of a shape. And to me, that is the number one helpful way that you can use a looper pedal.